Rum, chapter 30, The Stilt Skin. Because Frederick and Bruno were soldiers and something like nobility, they were able to get a carriage with horses from the stables. Better for quick, said Frederick. I'll send a message to father and I'll tell him you're having a hard time. Bruno snorted. Frederick found a gnome and gave him the message. Then we left. When I had nothing with me, the journey to the troll's forest had taken half a day. He was so slow. But with the carriage, we were there within a half an hour. Bruno whipped the horse so they went faster and we bounced along the road. Archie woke with the whips and the roar of the carriage and started to wail. I tried to rock him and shush him, but he was awkward in my arms, and he only cried louder. Where is this place? Bruno yelled over the baby's wails. You said it was just beyond the gates. Bruno looked through the trees as if a wolf might jump out from them at any time. Slow down, just a bit further. We came to a bend in the road that I recognized. Stop, I told him, and Archie quieted as the carriage came still. We stepped down, and I walked off the road. Through here, I said, pointing into the blackness of trees. Frederick and Bruno halted at the edge of the road. And there? They asked at the same time. Frederick's voice cracked. I had to hide the gold in a place where no one else would find it. I walked into the trees. A few moments later, I heard their footsteps behind me. We walked slowly and quietly until we came to the apple tree. Its branches bowed, heavy with the weight of poison fruit. I really hope Bork was still trying to catch a pet, even though he had already had nothing. Gently, I sat the baby down on the ground. Wait here, I told them, and approached the tree. There was very little light to see by, but I carefully searched around the tree until I saw it. The snare. Very carefully, I placed my foot into the trap. Snap! Swip! Shwoof! The rope yanked me off the ground, and I screamed louder than necessary to attract the trolls. Fredericks and Bruno's jaws dropped. A few moments later, rustling came from the brush behind me, and the first of the trolls appeared, ugly and smelly as ever. Trolls! I shouted. Help! Trolls! Trolls! Help me! Help me! Frederick and Bruno squealed and ran, flailing their arms. They didn't even pause to pick up their baby nephew. They bolted through the trees toward the carriage. I barely heard the crack of the whip or the horse's hooves as they're above their screams. In a few moments, the noise faded. What's this, said one of the trolls. Didn't you learn anything from last time? Oh, Bork. Archie began crying. And you brought an extra, said Bork. Well, we can always use a side dish. Oh, you don't want that, I said. Far too bitter. Do you have any sludge? We always have sludge. And he cut me down. The per first part of the plan worked, and I was out of the castle, and Frederick and Bruno were gone. But that was the easy part. Now I had to find a stilt skin before it was too late. Something told me I was in the right place. I was greeted with many snorts and snarls from the trolls. Slop had now had a wolf pelt on his head instead of his deer antlers. How'd you get that? I asked. He ate the apples, said Slop. Wolves don't eat apples, Bork corrected. He died with starvation, didn't even have any meat on his bones. Because those apples ate him up with all the poison. Slop pushed down and the wolf pushed down the wolf head so its teeth were hanging over his eyes. Then he sniffed me. You still reek of magic. I wanted to tell him that he reeked of troll, but I didn't. Mard hugged me when she saw me, which was comforting despite the smell. What's this? she said, pointing to Archie in his basket. That's Archie, I said without explanation. He's horribly clean, and so are you. Bar took Archie from my arms, and Gorp and Grot tackled me to the ground and smeared mud in my clothes. As I stood up, a fat donkey king trotted toward me. Nothing! He betrayed, he brayed and pushed me with his head and right back down in the mud. We named him Horace, said Grot. He likes to eat worms. I laughed. Nothing's name is Horace, and he likes to eat worms. Well, he looked happy. Maybe having a real name made him a better donkey. Marg pushed a cup of sludge into my hands. You need fattening, she said. You grew. And then she dipped her fingers into the sludge and fed some to Archie. I thought for sure he would start crying, but he didn't. He slurped and gurgled. The young prince had a taste for worms. This will make him a strong boy, said Marg. 
Why have you come back? asked Lord. And who were those boys? Those were the Queen's brothers. They can make gold from straw too? Lord asked. They didn't look too smart. They can't make gold. Neither can the Queen. I took a deep breath. I can though. All the slurping and grunting and snorting stopped. And the trolls stared at me. So I told them my story. All of it. The spinning, my mother, my name, and how I had come to gain Archie. No wonder you reek of magic, said Slob. You were born in this stuff. Why can't you give him a back if you don't want him, Slob asked. Because she promised him in exchange for the gold, so I have to take him. That's part of the magic. Why would she promise her baby, asked Gork. I don't know. Humans do a lot of things that make no sense. The trolls grunted in agreement and raised their cups. Archie started to cry. Mark bounced and rocked him. Too clean, poor thing. She took handfuls of mud and slathered it on his face, and he looked like a piglet in the mud, in a mud puddle. I thought for sure he'd go into hysterics, but instead he stopped crying and drifted off in Mar's arms as she rocked him. Watching this, I felt a pang in my chest. A baby should have a mother, and a mother should have her baby. That is, if destiny works out the way it's supposed to. I needed to find a way to give Archie back to Opal. That's why I'd come here. I have something to show you, said Bork. What is it? Something I discovered a little while ago. Let's go to the tree. We took a torch through the trees until we came to the clearing with the apple tree, standing so still and so imperfect in the dark. Bork reached up and picked up an apple and held it to the light of the torch. This tree grew from the seeds of a poisoned apple, you know. I've never tried one, but a few weeks ago, I saw a strange thing. A family of raccoons came out in the middle of the night and started eating those apples. I watched them, followed them to their den. They didn't die. They didn't even seem sick. So I thought, maybe those apples are poisonous for raccoons. But I kept watching the tree. And a week later, I saw some squirrels gnawing at the apples. And they didn't get sick either. So you know what else? I thought, maybe those apples really aren't poisonous at all. Maybe the poison doesn't grow from the poison. Grow from poison. Not always. This tree, I think just maybe it grew the way it wanted it to. Those seeds, they were stronger than the magic. Without warning, Bork took a bite of the apple. I snatched it and threw it away. What are you doing? He chewed and swallowed and we waited. My heart pounded, and I thought that any moment Bork was going to drop dead. He smacked his lips and grimaced. Surely the poison was sinking in now. Not as good as sludge, he said. Well, I just thought that that might be useful to you. You can think about it. Think about what? The things you know. That you don't know, you know. You're so bright. You're not so bright compared to a troll. But you're chrome smarter than most humans. Thank you, I said. But I'm not sure I understand. You humans always talk about magic and destiny like it's the most powerful thing in the world. Like it controls you. It doesn't? I guess it does if you want it to. Maybe it does other humans. But you, Rump, you were born with magic. I can smell it stronger on you than any magical object I've ever found, and even stronger than this tree. But that's the problem, I said. It's the magic that's caused all this trouble. Like all those things in your horde cause trouble. I can't do anything about it. It's the people who cause the trouble, Rump, not the magic itself. If you're so full of magic, why should you be helpless? I don't know. I felt dizzy with confusion. Bork handed me the torch. Think about it. It's not so hard. He walked back to the trees. Everything was cold and quiet now, except for the crackle of the torch. I stared at the apple tree. I still couldn't believe Bork ate one. Maybe that poison didn't work on trolls. Maybe it only worked on princesses. Or maybe Bork was right. Those seeds really were stronger than the magic. I am not a tree. I was born with a name that named my destiny, and that name named my destiny. Rumple has me wrapped and trapped. It controls me. My destiny controls me. But then a new question entered my mind. What is destiny? I knew that everyone had one, and just as they had a name, and they were the one, and this, they were one and the same, just as no one person chooses their own name. No person chooses their own destiny. It's up to them. But what if it wasn't so? What if Red's granny said that I must find my destiny doesn't mean that I have to say 
doesn't that mean I have to say some say in where to look? Maybe destiny isn't something that just happened. Maybe destiny is something you do. Maybe destiny is like a seed that in it grows. I wasn't powerless. Even with my name, even with all the snares and tangles, I could do things like spin straw into gold and make terrible mistakes that ended up with girls being carried to their doom and promising me their firstborn child. That was all part of my destiny. My name is Rumpel. My name means I am bound, but I can grow more powerful than those bindings. I am more than the name I have always known. Deep inside, I have a power that no one can take away from me. A deep magic more powerful than any magic placed upon me. A magic I was born with that grew inside me, deep in my bones. A stiltskin. I am Rumpel. I am a stiltskin. Rumpel. Stiltskin. I pictured my mother holding me in her arms, dying, ready to give me a name, a name that would overpower all the magic that had trapped her. She whispered it to me. It was a name that would make me everything I am. No one else had heard it but me. My name is my destiny. My name is my power. Rumple, still skin. I heard my mother's whisper reaching across years and mountains and valleys. Rumple, still skin. Rumple, still skin. The name. My name shook in my chest. It traveled through my brain and down my arms and fingertips to my legs and toes. The sound of it echoed so loud inside of me, I felt I would burst. I made a rhyme then and there, a rhyme full of powerful words to release into the black of night. Tomorrow I'm free. Today I'm alive. The curses and tangles no longer survive. From deep within, the wisdom came that Rumpelstiltskin is my name. I was a stiltskin, and that power was greater than the rumple. It, I felt it now, all inside of me, as if just saying my name out loud had unleashed a force that was wrapping around the tangles, ready to rip them apart. I picked an apple from the tree and took a bite, sweet juice filling my mouth. I am more powerful than a tree, I shouted into the night air, and I laughed and danced. A flickering shadow caught my eye, and I froze mid-laugh. Frederick stepped behind from a tree in the clearing, his arms trembling as he held up a bow and arrow. Don't move, he said. Come out, Bruno. He kicked at his brother, who squealed and slid from behind. Another tree holding a spear tight to his chest. He was white as the moon and shaking so hard as if it was someone, some outside force, were throttling him. Don't move, Frederick said, pointing his bow and arrow at me. You have to come back with us. You have to spin all that gold or your friend is going to get hurt. You're going to get hurt. Frederick took a step forward. Bruno took a step back and whimpered, mumbling, Trolls! Filthy trolls! Cursed trolls! I dropped my apple. I wasn't afraid of Frederick or Bruno anymore. They looked pathetic and small, quivering with their weapons. I was amazed that I had ever been afraid of them, had I had ever allowed them to bully me. But I also realized I wasn't free yet. I had found my name. I still felt it inside me. The magic of my silk skin was still rushing through my arms and legs and my brain, making me big and powerful, but the rumble had yet to be untangled. Red was still trapped inside the castle. There was still a miller to face, and I still had Archie with me, and no one could untangle it but me.